Hello everyone, this is Crota and I'm going back in time, well, two weeks in fact, to a game between Focus and Believe. We see Focus spawning as the yellow orc over here on the top left hand side of Terranus stand. Meanwhile, over here on the bottom right, we have Believe spawning as the pink undead. Why am I choosing to go back in time? Is this particular game much better than any of the recent games played? No, that is not the case, or perhaps it is, I haven't seen this game yet. The reason why I'm going back in time is, unfortunately, G Cup 71 replays were not released, at least not on the sites that I frequently visit, and therefore I need to go back and cast some older games. Now, if anyone from G Cup wants to reach out to me, do some sort of partnership, link, link arms together, and walk forward into, well, the sunrise, I don't want to say sunset, sunrise of the Warcraft 3 community still casting great games, definitely definitely reach out to me and i will make sure to continue my venture of casting warcraft 3 in english anyways let's go ahead and break things down as believe has spawned as the pink undead on the bottom right hand side of terranus stand as i mentioned earlier slight delay on the altar of darkness and an earlier graveyard means that we will be looking at crypt fiends in this matchup on the top left, most likely we are looking at a Blade Master coming out from this Altar of Storms from Focus. Barracks is right there, and we need to see where the Tomb of, um, not the Tomb of Relics, the Voodoo Lounge will be placed down, and the timing on that to figure out what exactly the Orc player Focus is trying to do. An earlier Voodoo Lounge means that he's probably going to be creeping and then picking up items. Or excuse me, a later, um, a later Voodoo Lounge probably means that. We'll have to take a look at the timing on the Grunt as well. As we can see, a Voodoo Lounge being placed down here. Now, this Voodoo Lounge will serve double duty, double purpose, acting as a scout as what's going on down in this location here if the undead try to come in from the west side. Meanwhile, the Blade Master can also reshop there as well as the Blade Master now heading across the map. Now, this is not your typical, typical play. I would have expected the Blade Master to open up and at least try to clear out this 533 creep count, get some early, early items. Instead, he is going for the harassment strategy now you can take a look at this down across over here crypt fiend gonna get some easy easy damage here now go after the apprentice wizards perhaps even go after that crypt fiend there you can see that the apprentice wizards are they gonna go back to their same spots um going after one two oh, wait what is he doing is he gonna go after one or two of those i'm not 100 sure that crypt fiend wants to grab that experience the blade master gets it and the item the slippers of agility and he has stolen a small amount of experience Death Knight, however, still has plenty to do in order to clear out this Apprentice Wizard and perhaps clear out this 533 Creep Camp, which would give him level 2. Blade Master still across over here. Death Knight is across over here. As you can take a look, the Wind Walk is about to come to an end. So a Wind Walk strike onto that one Grunt there. Now the Death Knight does have Death Coil, will be able to heal up once more and the blade master of focus really pressuring hard now i don't see that many additional units coming in from the blade master so we should be looking at a tech to tier two already and that is about a quarter of the way done i thought perhaps it was much much earlier as halls of the dead is now already underway as well and are we getting a nerubian tower yes we are heavier investment into that defense to slow down that blade master and stop any serious harassment death knight is going to be sitting inside his base for a little while longer not able to really venture forth and get all of that necessary experience. Blade Master may be going after the uh, the the Crypt Fiend again down across over here. I'm not quite sure why they are separated from that Death Knight. Death Knight off over here, you can see a couple of skeletal minions, and still the Blade Master is poking apart these Crypt Fiends. Crypt Fiends now down to 210 hit points, but a Nerubian Tower and a Death Knight should be able to clean that up very, very easily. Believe doing a great job clearing out creep camps, splitting up his army, which is something that is not very, very easy to do. Now, the Blade Master was most likely looking to do heavy, heavy harassment on his opponent, but the Death Knight is going to be getting his own experience. You can see there is four skeletal minions there, most likely going to be traveling across here now to get a little bit more experience, or perhaps even heading off to the north here to look for any other unsuspecting units. All right, there you have it across over here. There's a Grunt Blade Master now coming across the spots of Crypt Fiend. That Crypt Fiend is now going to be coming back once more. 
as telemarketers constantly, constantly call me and scam artists call me. Death Knight now making their way back off to the north here. Going to be clearing this out here and now going after the grunt. All right. Crypt Fiend. Going after that grunt there. Unit still looking to back off. Kobo Tunneler now taking a little bit of damage. Back across over here. Grunt now going after this Crypt Fiend here. And this is not looking good at all. Crypt Fiend now heading back off to the north. Mantle of Intelligence getting picked up as the Blade Master is sitting at level 2 with two circlets of nobility. Blade Master now going to be heading back down to the south here, perhaps going after the Forest Troll Shadow Priest and then the remaining Sasquatch units. You can see that Focus really wants to get to level 3. The Death Knight is still sitting at level 1, but does have a Sacrificial Skull, so will be able to generate a lot of hit points when fighting on Blight. That is a lot of Crypt Fiends moving out across the map here, but this is not quite enough to really put any pressure on the undead base. Yes, there are orc burrows, but, but the Spirit Lodge and the Bestiary are nearing completion. Those Crypt Fiends will not be able to get there in time to try and slow them down. I am curious as to what the overall strategy and gameplay is going to be throughout the rest of this matchup as the Grunts are now making their way out over here. Blade Master, Boots of Speed, Wind Walk, Level 2, and Double circuits of Nobility. Meanwhile, back off to the north here, the Shadow Hunter is now out on the field as the Death Knight using Blight here to try and clear up this creep camp. All right, Blade Master is really nearby. Gonna go after that Crypt Fiend. There goes one Crypt Fiend. No slow on the Blade Master. Scroll of Town Portal now being used. Is he gonna be able to finish off another? I do not believe so, no will be able to finish off the Cobalt Taskmaster if he chooses to, but gets bashed first. All right, healing salves now being used. Gr Shadow Hunter is right here. Blade Master, um, well, perhaps should be using a Clarity Potion right about now. Very, very low on mana using Windwalk already. Not quite sure why that hasn't happened as we now continue to see the Shadow Hunter creeping out here. This is a... Uh, what, a three? Oh, a quick hex onto the Cobalt Taskmaster makes this creep camp much easier to take out. Blade Master sitting at level three, and it looks like Believe is going to have a very difficult time here as the Blade Master is still nearby. Frost Armor, however, slowing things down. Dust of Appearance as the Blade Master needs to run away, and the Death Knight may be able to, or does spot this Blade Master. Blade Master still trying to run across over here. It's going to take a little bit of damage. He shouldn't realize that, hey, you know what? I have Dust of Appearance on me. There's not much that I can really do at this point as he uses that Clarity Potion finally. Shadow Hunter needs to get, or needs to start using some more healing salve charges. Not quite sure why he hasn't done that yet. Oh, going after this 3-1-1 Creep Camp. Blade Master going to look to heal himself up a little bit more. Decides to forego the healing salve, just the Clarity Potion. Um, and he's still wandering around here. Meanwhile, back in the center, Shadow Hunter sitting at level 3. We should be looking at a healing salve on that grunt momentarily. Um, no, still nothing there as the Blade Master is still trying to do a bit of haunting. Death Knight sitting at level 2. We could see a little bit more damage. The Kobo Taskmaster is very low. And oh, the Blade Master does get the item. I believe, no. Did he not? He didn't get the item. He was right next to it. No, Potion of Greater Mana actually goes to the Death Knight. Um, interesting, inter interesting, interesting pickup there as he is going to be able to use all of that mana very, very effectively to keep all of his units alive. Bl Crypt Fiend down to 205, but he is not going to fall. Death Knight now running back down across over here as the Shadow Hunter will be getting to level 3 in just a moment. Split action in this game. Death Knight heading back over to the Tomb of Relics. He may be picking up perhaps an Orb of Corruption. No, just Dust of Appearance and another Rod of Necromancy as the Lich is sitting at level 1. Blade Master low on hit points. Shadow Hunter separated from that Blade Master. That Blade Master playing the pure, pure harassment game needs to really, really figure out how to get ahead as the Blade Master loses that Wind Walk at just the wrong time. All right, Blade Master now Wind Walks away again. Dust of Appearance onto the Blade Master. Blade Master is revealed as the Death Knight is going to be coming across over here. All right, one Enforcer across over there. There's a Death Coil. Blade Master unable to steal that. Death Knight now needs to be extremely careful as you can see that the Blade Master is still right there. All right, Lightning Shield. Oh, Blade Master, there's the Potion of Healing in time as now the Blade Master is in a little bit of trouble, but he does have mana. He will be able to Wind Walk here if he chooses to. All right, Death Knight wandering back across over here. You can see the damage. Potion of Lesser Invulnerability, Dust of Appearance as the Blade Master picks up the Belt of Giant Strength and will be able to run and fight again another day. Belt of Giant Strength sold. 
Clarity Potion now being used. No healing salve. Speed Scroll being used instead. And I'm not quite sure I agree with the Speed Scroll on the Blade Master. Blade Master um, has so far been getting extremely lucky, but now that he does have that Orb of Lightning, he may be able to come out ahead a little bit further. An interesting call to actually go to Fortress, something that you rarely see an Orc player do when they're playing up against an undead in this 1v1 matchup. All right. Purge onto the Obsidian Statue. Wind Walk Strike followed by a Critical Strike. This one Obsidian Statue already down to 125 hit points. 85. Going to be forced to walk away. The Unholy Aura now giving better regeneration to that Obsidian Statue, at least for now. As the Shadow Hunter is already at 4. Boots of Quelta lost. Very, very powerful item once more. Most likely will be given to that Blade Master for maybe the Slippers of Agility or the exchange of that Speed Scroll. You can see the Troll Headhunters are being added as well for the eventual transition into Destroyers as more Obsidian statues are being trained. Heading back off to the north over here, Shadow Hunter clearing up this location. Kodos with that uh, War Drums dealing plus 4 damage. Boots of Quelta Lost, that's plus 6 there. Add in the Circlet of Nobility, that is plus 10. So very, very high damage indeed as a Lightning Shield does go down onto that Spirit Walker. Spirit Walker now being forced to back away. Doesn't want to deal a tremendous amount of damage across the board as the Blade Master. Still relatively low on hit points, but now picking up a Goblin Sapper. Goblin Sapper with a Blade Master. Blade Master may just... Oh, Speed Scroll. And oh, this was a specific strategy to cry and come in. And there you have it. Sacrificing itself right there. That ghoul positioned himself in just a way so that other Nerubian Tower could not get splashed. Beautifully, beautifully done there. A good sense of what focus was trying to do from believe if both of those towers did go down both nerubian towers then the blade master would have been able to just come in here and wreck all of these poor exposed acolytes level three on that blade master level one pit lord level three death knight level two lich so 3-2-1 up against a 3-4 respectively as the shadow hunter may even get to level five at level five Oh wait, what, what's going on? Sell, dropping them some items, exchanging some items. Blade Master now up to plus 32 attack. That is absolutely scary. Um, if he stays within combat range of that Kodo, that Kodo will give an additional plus 10 attack on that Blade Master. Plus 32. So more than doubling the base damage that that Blade Master can be dealing. All right, let's take a look at this. Great Hall currently mining away. So we are mining 14 gold a second compared to 7. There is a Sentry Ward now placed down. And here we have the, the engagement now going on. All right, trying to go after some units. Blade Master engaging up against that Destroyer. Devour Magic. Howl of Terror as the Destroyer could be able to constantly just devour that and then uh, continually attack units. Death Knight needs to get a Death Coil off on that Destroyer. No, does not happen. Kodo Beast and Tro Forest Troll Berserker able to finish things off. There goes a Crypt Fiend. And Focus is just tearing apart Believe at this point. Howl of Terror coming in once more. Speed Scroll units are just wandering around back and forth. Death Coil not in time as we do see a Grunt get taken out finally. So far, Lich sitting at level 2, taking a Purge, level 5 and level 4 now, as Focus easily takes game number 1 in this series. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game 1. Please stay tuned for game number 2.